Justin Gatlin is the latest in a long line of sprint sensations to emerge from the USA. Gatlin got a good start. Look at this man coming through now. Gatlin. What a fantastic performance Gatlin. from Gatlin. Gatlin. The ultimate goal is to be one of the best sprinters in history. And what a fantastic performance of Gatlin. And look at the time. It's the American leader, the Jamaican at the moment. He knows he is the world champion. Of Justin Gatlin is the world champion here in London. All right, y'all. Y'all know it's a new episode of Ready, Set, Go. We appreciate y'all tuning in to what we do, it, man. We do this because we know that you want it, and that is important to us. 100%. So without further ado, Ready, Set, Go. So what's our first topic, man? What you want to jump on, man? Man. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, Diddy. Go ahead. Ah, that was, <laughs> well, that's a, that's a real thing out there now, man. Anybody on that no Diddy trip. That's crazy. But yeah. you know, the, the the first first thing we're going to jump out with, man, was uh saw a recent interview, man. Um, They were interviewing uh Usain Bolt, asking him about Noah's statement on the 1910 breaking his world record. Uh. Noah obviously think that 1910, he say he thinks about it, he dreams about it and everything else. Bolt says he has the tools to do it, but Bolt said he wouldn't tell him how to do it. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> All right, so I'll start with, with Noah's part. Um, listen, man, this, this young athlete has manifested everything that he has in front of him already, and we've watched, we've witnessed him do this from winning uh, 100 meters, in the world championships to running uh, times that were to, to running the American record of 1930, 31, right. To now running the 60 meters and running a uh, superior time. He has willed himself to these goals that he has set out for himself, bro. Like it's hard to doubt people who have shown you over and over again, that they are really focused and they want to accomplish it. Now, with that being said, 1910 is a tall order. That is a very, 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 very tall order. Mind-blowing, in fact. And I think when you look at trying to win a championship compared to trying to break a world record, they're two different goals. Winning a championship is preparing yourself to go through the certain rounds the prelims, the semis, the finals, making sure that you have enough left in the tank to go out there and charge the line and win this goal, right? But when it comes to a world record, you know that it comes with precision. It comes with timing, the elements, all that comes into effect. You got to do it on the right day. You got to make sure you're in the right lane. You got to make sure you have the right competitors that's going to push you to that, to that world record. These are all the things that are necessary to break world records usually. And we've seen that in history. Now, what Bull said, I think it's true. You know, he has the tools and capabilities of running something that we have never seen. But at the same time, you talking, you asking, well, this question is being asked to the world record holder. Of course, he's not going to tell you how to break his own record. That's crazy, bro. And he shouldn't. He shouldn't do that because he worked hard for it, man. He worked hard to get that record and... He shocked the world with it. Why does he want to help someone erase what he has done? He ain't gonna show. That that that, that keeps a world record outside outside of America. A lot of the world records come from America. Keeping it in the Caribbean, I think, is probably something he would like to do or keep a little longer. I think he tells him how to do it, but in time. I think he just holds on to it for right now. But I think in time, um, if he comes to races track meet again or he come down. You know what I mean? Or he goes to Jamaica and, and chills there for a week. I think Bolt, Bolt may relinquish some some knowledge on him on what he thinks or how he thinks he could do it. Let's not remember, I think, not forget that Wade Dreamer went down to Jamaica for a while. You know what I mean? And and then th things started to change for him. Maybe they exchanged some type of, the coaches had changed some type of training tactics and that occurred, and then things started to change for Wade before he got injured. So I get what you're saying. But once again, I think Bolt's a great guy. He's actually a kind individual, especially when it comes to helping the next generation of superstars in the sport, right? He talks to them. He gives drops knowledge on them. We see them, like you said, with Wade. But let's not forget, Wade is a 400-meter world record holder, right? So. 
bulk in any information to be able to go out and break a world record in a whole different event that is not his territory, by all means, I believe that true. But I don't think you saying it's going to give up the knowledge for someone to come break his records. I'm going to help you be great, but why would I help you be greater than me? That, yeah. I don't think that's going to fly. That, that's that Shaka Zulu effect. I don't know if anybody <laughs> watched that. Shaka Zulu, nobody can be better than Shaka, boy. Shaka going to hold it down. But well, that uh, was like a three. That was like a three-part <laughs> series right there. Boy. It was. You, <laughs> you had to have a week off to watch watch that movie. But anyway, yeah. uh, nah. So, I, I de- go ahead. Say what you're gonna say. Nah, but. I said definitely. I see your point about he he wasn't in the territory. But I did see an interview where he said that that was one of the biggest things he missed in the sport. He said he wanted to race Wade. Wade. He did say he wanted to race him. So that's one of his biggest regrets that he didn't get to race him. Uh, yeah, you're right. I saw that. And he also was quoted saying, um, he just, he came along at, later on in, in Bo's career. You know what I mean? So I, he felt, I, he said he felt like he could never compete against him at that point in time. You know what I mean? And be victorious. That's what it comes off as saying. Um, boy, Wade was, Wade was a different beast then. You know what I mean? For sure. Like, nah. like we, we, all, we all put our money in thinking that this dude was going to go out there and run 42. Now, you know Wade, I mean? Wade is definitely different. He, he definitely put the definition to you either going to beat me or I'm going to be in the hospital. And which he's put himself in the hospital. <laughs> That's crazy. Running some of these races. Like yeah. you either going to beat me or I'm going to die on this track. And he conceptualized that to the, I think, to the fullest. <laughs> but, but, but see, that's my point. My point is, all right, we're going we're gonna to allow Wade to go out there and will himself to a mind-blowing world record. Why do we not think that Noah has the same capabilities of doing so? You know what I mean? Like, will is will. You know, if, if we think Wade can will himself and he did, then the money should be on the fact that Noah may be able to do the same thing. You know? I think... I think both of those situations uh, are, are different. So to your first question of why we, we possibly don't think that he can is he probably underestimates the, the rounds of the 100 before the 200. You know, when Wade broke the world record, he's only worrying about one race, just the 400. He wasn't a dual athlete. You know what I mean? Um, I think Bolt is the only one who, who's ever done that uh, uh, on mail. And, in our Olympics or or in a world championship where he broke them both. You know what I mean? So I think um he might underestimate the rest and the and what he may have to go through and trying to do that twice. And I didn't say anything about the hundred. I know he said it about the two hundred, but those rounds in that hundred was gonna take out a lot on his body, especially if he's trying to to get gold, because the margins for him are a lot smaller. Uh, of him getting that goal in the 100 meters uh, at the Olympics. They, they're in his favor for the 200, but they're stacked up against him in the 100. Do you feel like it'll be greedy to go out there and try to win the one, the two, and also try to break a world record in pursuit? No, nah, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the dream. That's, that's what you want. I think... Seeing the end goal and or knowing your end goal and the plan, you just don't see how you're going to get there. But nah, he, he that's what he wants to achieve. We've seen other people achieve it before him. I just think it's about, you know, like you said, the elements, the precision, how him and his coach are going to go about it. That's the most important part. You know what I mean? I don't think it can be done. I just think uh, the, the way he says it or the way he, he speaks about it, he speaks about it so easily. And I think um, we may be taking it out of context, making him, making us think that we think he think that it's going to be easy for him to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've watched a lot of interviews that Noah has given, especially this season, and a few things he has said where he has a to do list. He wants to go out and run nineteen ten, but he also wants to run. He also wants to compete at the one, the two, the four by one, and possibly four by four at the Olympics as well. That right there is such a, a rare thing that you see in our sport where you have an iconic athlete who says, you know what? 200 is not going to get it done. I mean, a one and a two, been there, done that. I know I can win gold in a four by one with my team. Look at my team. 
I want to try, I want to test the waters with this four by four. Do you think, what's your, what is your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on that, man? Cause that's it's, a. There's not a lot of people that's done that, man. You got. So let's go, you, let's go down the list. Who's that? Who you got over there? I got like Carl. Yeah. You go, you go further back than them. You may be Jesse Owens. Uh, Marion Jones. Uh, the most recent would be Bolt. Uh, and I think Michael Johnson. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a crowd of people, bro. It's, it's very minimal. So he would put himself in the conversation of a very small group of people of, who've achieved that feat. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, which is a very hard feat because that group would be a whole lot bigger. We've yeah. had plenty of our grace that's tried and failed. I mean, even even Maurice at the triple goal with Maurice Green, you know, he, he couldn't get it done. You know what I mean? We, we've we had, uh, and not that he, he couldn't or, or didn't want to, it's just I think they underestimate how they're going to get to that point. Because remember, one of those medals are not dependent on just you. It's dependent on three other people. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Hell, no. I've been in the same situation. I ain't getting done either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, you work so hard, and you come, you coming from an era, let's just say 2004, right? We were running four rounds back then still, bro. It wasn't three rounds. You were getting up 8 o'clock in the morning, running your first round, which is your first round. Then you do prelims. Then you do semis. Then you do finals. Everybody. Now that's just one event. Now you move on to the 200. First round. Then you do prelims. Then you do semis. Then you do finals. Then you got to come back and do, I think, almost three rounds back then of four by one. So you were literally doing about, by the time you finish the world championships, you got at least 10, 10 races under your belt easily, you know? So now it's a little more condensed. You don't got four, you got three. But still, that is, that's a lot of running to do in a short period of time at a high level. At a very high level. I mean, we've seen how some of these heats go. You got dudes dropping. Nine eight nine nine in the heats, not not the semis, in the heats. The heats. You know what I mean? We've seen some four hundreds where you had to run maybe forty four flat to make it out. Forty four flat to make it out. <laughs> to make it out. That's crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know you have to run ten ninety in the hundred for the women to make it out. To make it out, you have to PB every round to get to the doggone medals. Damn, bro, that's crazy. Every round, bro. Every round. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. But shout outs to Noah, man. I mean, I I like the enthusiasm. You gotta keep pushing the benchmark or else our sport will be be boring. That's that's what has to happen. You know what I mean? We didn't think it could happen. Then Bolt came and he 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 won triple gold in three Olympics. Let's keep that in mind, man. You have people who won't even last two Olympics like yourself or whatever. This man got gold in three of them. Three. With with Olympic records, I think in two of them. Yeah. <laughs> that's unheard that's, of. Like like that's that's just crazy in itself, and which is why he is mentioned as the goat of our sport. But like it's just it just that's that's just crazy to have that type of standing power over years and years of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's only it's only a few like him too. Him and you and Shelly Ann and and a lot of the people who've been around a long time. I think some people even forget about VCB, man, Veronica. She's been to multiple Olympics and been getting hardware, world championships, man. Yeah, I mean, she's she's one of the the greats who I who I still salute to this day. Absolutely. Definitely, man. Definitely. So since we talk about sprinters and their pedigree, are you surprised at at Tobogo's pedigree, man? Because no. we went no, from you... talking about his 300 where he ran not too long ago, where he ran 30, 69. And then now, just a week ago, he drops 44-22, right? And he already has a 950 under his belt. He has a 98 under his belt. A 1950 under his belt. He has 98 under his belt. Like that to me, I'm personally, I'm super impressed. Like that's it. That's impressive to me. That whole lineup. Like, what are you? What kind of sprinter are you? Are you a 400 runner? Or are you an a uh, hundred meter runner? Listen, he he is in. The, listen, I'm a fan, so you know. At the end of the day, I'm not surprised at anything this kid can do. I, I'm more expecting it at this point. You know what I mean? That his 
His his sprinting resume probably knocks him or puts him in maybe the top three all time of all all around sprinter by times, not by medals, not by world records or anything else. Because I know the comments go crazy once you put somebody in a place <laughs> by just his times. And you got nine eight, nineteen fifty. 30.6, which is a world record, and then 44.2. The only people I think you had, what? Michael Johnson was number one on that list at, what, 10 flat, 19.3, 30.8, and 43.1. Then you had Wade Van Nieker at 990-something, 19, I think he's 19.7, 43.0, and 30.7. So he's, he's, he's amongst them two. Because everybody, then there's a huge drop off with everybody else. Everybody is in the 45s. Who runs the one and the two? They're more so in the 45s, except for, for Tyson. I think Tyson's at 44.8. But Tyson never officially ran a, ever ran a 300. So you could only judge him by his 9.6 and then by his 19.6 it is. So yep. he's missing that. So that's the only reason why I will put him above Tyson, because Tyson doesn't have a 300. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Yeah, he should have ran a tight. He should have ran a 300, man. Definitely his career, especially his 150 time too, man. It was crazy. Um, and let's let's remember, man. He ran. He just ran 44 two in March. In March. <laughs> in March. In March. In March. We have a whole season ahead of us. In March. The last but time, last time we saw something like this, bro. You know who it was from. And it was recent. We saw something like this from Fred, where he opened up his season with a bomb ass time, and then he ended up being world champion. <laughs> you, hey, you 100 said right. This is very reminiscent of some bullshit like that, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy, if it's anything, if it's anything like that season, boy, y'all better strap in, dog, because y'all about to go on a ride for real. <laughs> Boy, um, speaking of Fred, man, he just opened up his season, man. Opened up with a 10.03. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, man? And he's, you know, he seems very confident. You know, when you watch his page, his social media page, you know, uh, even with victory and through defeat, he always shows that he's consistent with his determination. That's what I love about Fred, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he may be down, but he's never out. And he's always trying to feel, build his way back up, you know? So... How do you feel about this 10 3 with him open up this season? Man, I think that Fred's working on some things. I think uh, he was racing, but he was racing, working on things. You know, he, I think he races, I think he just signed up. I just came out that he's in the in the Diamond League in China against Coleman. Yeah, that's going to be a nice race right there. Yeah. That's going to be a nice so race. I think he was trying some things at a low-key Miami meet with some college athletes just to work on some things and see what he has to polish up on because he didn't want to go out there, as we would call it, butt naked. He <laughs> 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 wanted to shake something off and make sure, okay, we could go and we could fine-tune this and this, these are things we could do better. And like, like a lot of people don't know, like even if you're working on something, that doesn't mean like you may have stopped training. He can still have weights in his legs. He can still, you might not have tapered off of that meet. Everybody would be like, oh, 10 3 that's not fast. You got high schoolers running faster than that. But you never know where a person is at in their training and how they're training or what they're doing, what they're doing for. You know what I mean? So, Oh, 100%, man. I, I feel like our fan base, meaning the, in track and field, aren't privy to that kind of knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, there's stats out there, but... I don't think a lot of them understand the way of athletes, especially sprinters when they're preparing themselves for a season. A lot of them will run with load on their legs. Load meaning like they're still in the weight room. They're still lifting heavy. They're still doing sprint endurance workouts. So they're not sharp yet. And people who have done it in the past that have been truly successful has been Sharika, for sure. Uh, Shelly Ann and Elaine. They run always you know what I'm saying, with that load on their body and still run fast times. And then once they lighten up on the weights in the gym and stuff like that and start really doing more sprint stuff, oriented stuff, that's when they just take it to a different level. So this could be what Fred is doing. You know what I mean? This could be him telling himself, all right, cool. I'm going to go over to China in about a week. So guess what? In a week time, I'm going to chill out, 
I ain't gonna put a lot of load on my legs, and I know that I'm gonna be sub ten. Good. I, I think that I think that's what he's doing. I know I could see people in his comments are now talking about, oh, it wasn't a super fast time, but. Like I said, I feel like he's just dusting off the cobwebs and getting ready for the whole season, just working on some things. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. Sure. What, what else we got on the docket, man? What else? What so, else? young Jamaican superstar, Sprint Sensation, Brown and Williams, uh, she changed coaches. So now she's with the legendary John Smith. Um, I, I like this matchup. What, what do you feel about it? I like it too. If she could have the same success that she, if she could have the success that he has with Tolu, and then she's a younger athlete, meaning she'll stay there a whole lot longer. You know what I mean? Tolu is is a great force, but we all know. I think she she's probably maybe about ten years older than than Brianna, or yeah. seven years older. So she she has some years on her. So that standing power is a lot. Is a lot longer, and you know, John Smith is is has coached a lot of phenomenal athletes, male and female, and had a lot of success. I I kind of like this this move too. I think it it probably was uh, coached along by you know maybe Otto. You know what I mean? I know he's he's a great force in her life, and I know um, he might as like this might be good for you. And you know, out there in that atmosphere. Might be better for her too, you know what I mean? Out there in that that, that LA life, you know what I mean? It might be a little bit better for her too. I don't know. I don't think the LA life good for a lot of people, boy. <laughs> <laughs> LA to get crazy out there, boy. <laughs> um, everybody think they're a movie star when they get out there, man. Y'all gotta stay focused out there. Stay focused in LA, man. Hey, um, hey you you ain't lying. I remember, I remember Karan Clement went out there, man. And the year that he wasn't running good. I seen him in a Beyonce video. <laughs> but the year after that, he moved back with his old coach. He won the world championship. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, that, boy like, had, that boy had a to-do list. He said, look, all right, I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to go ahead and get into a Beyonce video. I'm going to get my cameo. I'm going to move back, and I'm going to win the world championship next year. So I'll, mission complete. I finally can retire. He did it though. He, shouts out to Karan, man. One of one of the great athletes of our time, man. It's Karan Clement. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, I like I like the move for her because, you know, she has success under Otto, and uh, obviously Otto was trained by John Smith, so a lot of probably Otto's knowledge does come is rooted from what John has taught him. You know what I mean? As an athlete, so we're probably some tweaks here and there as well, but. Watching what John has already done with, you know what I'm saying, Tulu also to me is a, a green flag because it's like, all right, cool. Not only does he have females running fast, and he has a long legacy of fast females from Tori Edwards to 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 Inga to Christy. To you Jet. know, so to Jet. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so it's like he he know what he's doing when it comes to getting the females fast. So I think she's in good hands. I'm excited to see exactly how that's going to grow. Yeah, I am too. Only thing too, what our fans might be privy to, if she if she made the move like around now, she she would basically get the whole impact of a John Smith program next year. You know, because she she came halfway through the year, so he may have to, you know, deal with some things, getting some habits out, and teaching a lot of the modalities he knows to her. You know, for him to go through a whole process to kind of get her to where he wants to be, so they're gonna have to be patient with our progress. They, and we know the fans want her to be, especially the Jamaican fans want her to be tight right now. But it might take it might take some time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's young and she came into sport really young, so you know, have patience with her for sure. Especially finding herself, finding her own. And then when you go from being, I feel like a young sprint feed on to winning all the time to now, you know, you're taking a couple of L's here and there, like it could also weigh on you a little bit. Then you got to re- rediscover who you are, you know? Um, but let's talk about something crazy, man. Like, have you been watching the high school four by one times, these relays, these boys, what they're doing out there in these relays? You don't have to watch it. It's going, it, it will find you. <laughs> Listen, 
Listen, I was sitting down and that thing came across my ticket. I saw 38.9. And I was like, this got to be like a college. or, but, but when I looked closer, it was a high school. But that didn't surprise me. What surprised me was 40 flat got third place in that race. 40 yeah. flat would win you any four by one in the country, anywhere you are. 40 flat got third place in that track meet, bro. Yeah, bro. That listen, Atasca Cedar, Atasca Cedar High in Texas, thirty-eight nine. Jelani Watkins at anchor. Take your hat off to him, man. He, if arguably the fastest kid in the nation, uh, whispers are saying that he can run by the t- end of the season. He can at least run ten zero. You know what I mean? So, or even better. So, we'll see what happens. But right now, they they rule the roost. Second place was 39-6. That's now, crazy. Now, now, keep in mind, the national record was 39-7. So that, that's two, two, two teams. Two, had, <laughs> two teams that smashed the record. <laughs> two teams that have smashed the record in the same race. The top five on this race have all went under 41. The top five went up to 41. Number six was 41 Point six. That's crazy, bro. That, Super that's crazy. crazy. I, I don't think our fans or some people who casually watch track and field, people who watch track and field may know, but some people who casually watch track and field might not understand how fast 38.9 is. 38.9 might not get you a medal in the World Championships or Olympics, but it will make the final. You'll be in the final somewhere. Maybe yeah, sixth or seventh. These kids would have been... Maybe fifth, sixth, or seventh in a in a world championship or an Olympic. <laughs> no, this is facts. Nine. This is <laughs> facts. Very true. They would they would have beaten countries. They would have been out there beating countries, though. <laughs> now, now keep in mind they won. So if they were in a in a setting like a huge setting where they can be dragged, maybe they would have even been faster because they won. They won running away, literally running away. They won. <laughs> So yeah. you never know, man. It's crazy. That is crazy, man. Other news, bro. Hey, you got uh, the Jamaican team, Drake Federation, the team. They just uh, dropped the Olympic uniforms, man. You know, which, is, at- which is fire, man. I, you know what I want to know about who designed those uniforms? I want to see the person that does them because if, if you're from that shoe company, that all they do is change the colors for every other country. <laughs> That wears from that shoe brand. But I want to see the designers who actually designed the uniform. Because the Bahamas is actually sponsored by Puma also. So our uniform will look like that, but just in the, in our country colors. But we need to give so, these... Go ahead. So the, the girl who decided, I found her on Instagram. Because I, I was thinking the same thing you were I was like, who designed these uniforms? Uh, you know, because I also love the fact that they, they paid homage to Marion... Uh, they pay homage to uh, Adi. Oh, for you know, real? Yeah. I mean, you, you go back and look at her old uniform that she wore. It is very similar to the new uniform. So they pay oh, homage to him. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Merle Ali. Shout out to Merle Ali on that one for real. Shout out. You know. So I think she is Dutch. She's Dutch American. And she just, she looks like a regular chick, bro. Like she's out here running these 5Ks, having a good time. You know what I mean? I'm thinking I'm about to go to the page where she's just like runway couture, like dog, nah, like she out here just living her life, dog, making making Olympic uniforms for, uh, for Puma and Team Jamaica. So, so, so does she work for Puma or this is some freelancer designer? Let me see. I mean, I think she works for Puma. She says in her bio that she works for Puma. So, making athletes fast and fly. Puma Rennie. So, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She worked for Puma. She put that on her Instagram. Yeah. Who, who, do, who does the Nike ones? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea, man. I know. I know it's, y'all it's, know. Always, it's always shrouded in secrecy, man. You know, yeah, you, you, like, you never know. Y'all never unveil y'all on until like it's closer to the Olympics. It's like, it's like you make the team and then they show you what it looked like. <laughs> no, that's exactly what they do, bro. You literally make the team and then the next day uh, they unveil what our Olympic uniforms look like. That's exactly what it is. 
That's good. So, so that that's got to be like a a very gratifying effect because now you made the team and you know the only way you have one of these is if you made the team be. They sell them later on. Like I think they sell them like maybe a year after. But like at that point in time, if you see anybody in a jacket, a pant, a shirt, they've earned it. It's Listen, crazy. Being getting on the team for from the Olympic trials and making the Olympic team. And also seeing the unveiling of the Olympic uniforms, it's like Christmas. It's like going to the Olympics and Christmas all at the same time. That's what it's like. So, so yeah. tell me, tell me this. I've done this before. When you made a team, did you like put on the whole kit and like stand in the mirror? And like, like, <laughs> all right. So what happens is, what you do is once you win, you get a ticket. You get a ticket when you cross the finish line and they tell you right then, hey, you have made the Olympic team. Here's your processing ticket. Go down to this corridor and make a left or whatever. And you go into the area where they start to process you for the Olympics. Right. So in the process situation, you go through they go through travel. They go through give you information about the country you're going to. Uh, they they pick your airline tickets. Then they set you up all the way. Then you go wardrobe. So in wardrobe, that's when you get to put the uniform on and you inside that little, you know what I'm saying, changing booth. You step out, you look good in your uniform and everything. So you, you really get to put it on then. But to really answer your question, once you get your uniform, your suitcase back at home, what's it sent to you? Of course you get, you take everything out the rabbits, you put them on. I walk around, <laughs> I sit on the couch. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I sat in my uniform, sat on the couch, watch TV. Especially my first kid, man, you you love it. You love being a part of the team. You would say, man, especially having that uniform. Kids kids wait their whole career for that moment, bro. No, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. Now that now that we spoke about that, man, we spoke about spoke about some things, man. You know, we had a short show today. We won't get to our Olympic story time unless you have something else. Nah, it's Olympic story time, man. Olympic I, story time. What you, what you want to talk about, man? I probably need your help on this one, too. Uh, I want to talk about 2012 London Olympics, four by one, and us going through that whole situation, man. Oh, wait. You remember that? Yeah. That's that's when Jamaica ran 36-8, right? That's, is that the first thing you're going to think about with, this, with my listen, Olympic story time? Listen, about man. about Jamaica ran 36-8? Oh, 30, yeah, 36, 36, 8. Yeah, yes, it was 36, 8. Man, that joke was crazy. I remember looking at the scoreboard and be like, damn, they were 36, 8 on them. <laughs> no. He said, hey, 36, 8 is like a high school team going 38. <laughs> but that, but that's that's not even why I remember that one. I remember that, but I remember right, is either right before that or after that. I remember Carmelita Kamal, them running 40 points, <laughs> which is which was, was so inspiring. Like when you watch it to this day, to this day when you watch the females, you know, I think it was more expecting for the males of Jamaica to do something special and y'all. But for the females to run 40 points, I think you still get chills watching it, like watching that quartet of women do what they do. I think it was Tiana to to uh, uh, Allison, Allison to Bianca to, Bianca. to Jet. It's it just it's just crazy. And it's, it's so crazy. I always remember Jet pointing at the clock before she come through the line. The junkie just gives you chills. Like I knew this is fast. I know this. <laughs> hey, listen, watching that, I still love it. No disrespect to any team that I've had on any relay. That is my favorite relay. <laughs> that is my favorite relay to watch right there. It gives me chills watching it even now. The fact is, when the gun went off, you felt the energy. You felt the confidence. You felt the, boy, you felt the swag, dog. I mean, the handoffs was just putting them up as flawless. The way they moved around the track, it was crazy. Like it was almost like they were floating. Especially when Bianca was running that third lane, like he was floating around the third dog. She had that stick off the jet. Jet went out there and shot the clock. Boom! <laughs> it was a world record. Like it wasn't even like it wasn't a, re- a late or delayed reaction. It was an all time reaction. 
action, dog. Like, she knew that they broke the world record. It was also, bam! That was she, crazy. She, listen, that she, right she, there. We got to get, I mean, I know this is your Olympic story time, but we got get a, We have to get one of those women to tell us what went into that four by one right there. So but we gonna get back, we're gonna get back to your story time though. But we gonna Bianca Knight, Addison Felix, Tiana Madison, one of y'all, uh Jet, one of y'all, please let us know if y'all wanna tell us about that whole night, man. Let us know. Yeah, please do, please do. So our relay was a little different back then. For 2012, um, for our finals, it was Tyson Gay at third, me at second, uh, Trail Kimmins at first, and we had Ryan Bailey anchoring, okay? For whatever reason, our prelims was all messed up, right? I think Tyson had a little, he was a little banged up and he couldn't run in the prelims. Something was wrong with Bailey. And I know that we had to figure out how we was going to put together a relay team. We had Doc Patterson, uh, Doc Pat, why I say Patterson? <laughs> Doc Pat. <laughs> we had Doc um, as our alternate. So we had to figure out how to be able to maneuver this whole order because our order was all messed up now. We didn't have our, we didn't have our legit third leg. We didn't have our anchor. We had B at second. We had trail at, uh, at start off, right? For first leg. But the issue was we didn't know how to be able to finish off that whole four by one relay order. So when we had to push the order around, so you had Doc at second, you had Trail Kim is at third, and you had me anchoring. This is, the, this is probably one of the only times other than 2013 you ever going to see me anchor a relay at a, at a high level championship. And that was our prelims. Our first leg, that's where the story gets interested, was Jeff Dibbs. Shout out to Jeff. At that point in time, (laughs) shout out to Jeff, man. (laughs) At that point in time, Jeff was a part of our Team USA relay pool. And we were training in Italy. And it just was, it wasn't vibe. It wasn't meshing. That's where the coach was feeling, right? The sticks weren't getting handed off correctly. And it was a lot of misses. And at that point in time, I think Jeff got frustrated. Jeff, I remember Jeff saying, hey, man, I'd rather get hit by... 400 pound lineman, then they go through this situation right now, man. <laughs> so he got on the plane, he left. Boom, he went back to America. Now, mind you, Jeff is also an NFL football player at the same time as he is an Olympian, right? So he went back to America, he started getting ready for football. Then he got the call. We had no one else to run. There was no one else for us to run. They brought him back from America over to the Olympics the day before it's time for us to run the prelims. We had no way of even working exchanges or anything. We plugged and played. We finally got him in. He got on first leg. He got into the blocks. So, boom. Gun goes off. He's motor around that turn, dog. And you could tell, like, Jeff the kind of person, like, he ain't, he ain't about drama. You nah, know what I'm saying? And everything like that. But he about to make his point. And he did. I'm going to tell you right now, that was one of the best leadoff legs I've ever seen, bro. Like, he was moving around that turn, hand the stick off to Doc. I've never seen Doc run a second leg, personally, right? And he moved down that best stretch like, oh, hold on, man. I'm sitting on anchor leg like, hold on, Doc. Like, I think you're about to take my spot, boy. You out there moving. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. What concerned me was trail. I'd never seen trail run third leg. Like, Trail is usually our starter. He's our leadoff. I've never seen Trail run any other, any other position. But Trail handled that position well, man. He got the stick. He ran that turn. Had the stick out to me. And I'm just cruising. We, we way in the lead. I'm cruising just on the home stretch. Boom, boom, putting it down. Bop, 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 bop. Not even giving, like, 100%. We come across that line. 37.04, I think was our time or it was 37, 14 or something like that. And we broke the American record. Now, mind you, this American record has been standing since Dennis and Carl Lewis, Leroy Burrell, them boys still had that record, like I think at 37, 40, dog. And we went out there and smashed the record without even like 
our mad effort. So we knew the finals were going to be special. So when everybody was patched up and ready to go with Tyson and Ryan, you know, we did our job in the prelims. We was proud of Doc, proud of Jeff. They handled business. And we went back to our original order, which was trail at first, me on the back stretch, Tyson running uh, the curve, and Ryan bringing it home, right? So we going against Powerhouse right now. We going against Jamaica. Jamaica in their prime, too. So gun went off. It's an epic battle all the way around the track. I, I get the stick. Boom. I put us in the lead. Come around that turn. Johan and Tyson battling for, for supremacy in that situation. They hand the stick off at the same time. And by the time we crossed the line, Jamaica ran 36-8. We ran 37-04. And we went out and broke the American rant again. again. In the same championship. That, so. that means you had two relay teams break the world record at the Olympics, which I don't think happens regularly, which is crazy, man. It's crazy. It is, man. It was a great time. It was a great time, for sure. It was, it was weird because when you deal with, you know how it is, man. When you deal with relay, especially in America, it's a lot of politics that's added to it. So sometimes you don't even know who's running. Before you even get on the track, everybody's warming up. <laughs> I think, I think everybody's in the back warming up, and then we everybody's waiting, saying, "All right, who's getting picked?" I think, I think y'all have the biggest relay pool than any other country out there because I think y'all be pooling people from the four hundred too, y'all, <laughs> which is crazy. Like when you look at every other country, their four by one is maybe four to seven guys. You won't see another guy in this in that season unless they're injured or hurt. But it's the same four to seven guys, no matter what. But y'all, y'all can run two different four by one teams, and they look totally different. Oh, yeah. Ten finals, like different, different personnel and everything. You'd be like, bro, what, what was that? <laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I just said, with that relay team right there, it was fifty percent change. You know what I mean? Going into yeah. the finals, but it's just the fact that such our we have such. Deep talent in America is almost like you got to give every opportunity up a chance. I do believe that we would do better if we had like, like an elite team, right? Like how everyone else does it. Create an elite team. That elite team is their task to go out there and win relays. Like they build synergy. They build a bond. They build a brotherhood. And their, their passes are going to be flawless. So would that be said... Do you think y'all should do it like this? And I, I'm not, I'm not trying to get at nobody at USATF. Or I'm just saying, but you do top six and the hundred are pooled with the top three of the two hundred pooled also, and that's the only pool they can work. I mean, that has happened in the past. We've had that. We 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 went from. Which was the rules was top three automatic on the relay, not automatically in the relay pool. It was automatically on the relay. In 2004, first, second, and third, we were already on the relay. Now they get to pick within that pool who, who's going to run that fourth leg, right? Or I take that fourth spot, should I say. Now it's changed so much throughout championships to where it went from top six to all the people in the finals to now, if you just finished a race in the Olympic trials, you are part, you could be part of the relay pool. So now they can just pick anybody they desire they want to pick. You know, and I feel like that's a double-edged sword because it's like, okay, cool. You can go out and get the best of the best. But then sometimes when you have too, much, too many options, now you start to like, your mind starts to wonder you're not really focused on who needs to be on this relay. Not taking any, you know, I'm saying any efforts because right now at this point in time, Michelle Lewis, she handling business. Uh, they handling business on the guy side with Mike Marsh. So it's the fact that it it's just so many people and so many options to pick from, man, that at some point in time, not only one, not two, almost a complete four by one that could challenge a whole other world championships is not going to get picked. 
in that fi- from that finals, from the 200, the 100, any pool, they're not going to be picked. We have so many different combinations. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I think I think it is tough for, for the relay coaches here too because this is the only nation and Jamaica for a while that you could run 9-8 or 10-8 and get left home. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, could, you could run 9-8 and be watching the Olympics from the crib, which is crazy. That's nice. this is this is you run nine eight in any other country you are the man. You run nine eight here, you're just amongst an, a, a few other nine eight nine nines. Oh, you get you get this. Good job, good job. We see you. We see you. Yep. <laughs> nice run. Nice run. <laughs> yeah. So I so I do get it. This 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 is a hard. Y'all basically got to run the Olympics twice, and the World Championship twice, man. Because y'all out. I think my first time was going to y'all Olympic trials was in 2021. And that that was just crazy, man. It was just crazy to make that team. You just it was just crazy. The the atmosphere and everything was just crazy. I get more anxiety from Olympic trials and nationals than I do world championships and the Olympics. Because you're dealing with the normal professional athletes you have to deal with every year. We're gonna be there ready to go, primed. And you also have to deal with these young college guys who are primed from having a full season already and they're ready to run. They already just finished their NCAAs. So you already know what they can, what their, the possibility what they can run. They already in 9-8 shape, 9-9 nine, nine shape or whatever else, right? So that's what you're dealing with. So you get, you get it from both sides. It ain't like you can just say, all right, cool, I'm going to fight off the pros. As soon as you start focusing on just eliminating pros, you got college kids to worry about too. And they out there being hungry too. They want their name out there. They want to make these teams. So that's what anxiety really comes in at, bro. It's like, you don't know, you don't know what can happen at, at a trials or a national. You used to be like, look, man, blinders, I'm just coming out here to get it done. Facts. Facts, man. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed our show here at Ready, Set, Go, man. We're going to leave y'all. And we want to thank to thank everybody that supported us. Remember our new channel on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. Link is in the bio. Ready, set, go. We out. We out.